In this movie, I'm going to show you how to create uh, something I usually call remote rollovers, even though that isn't necessarily the correct term. What? But what that means is that when you roll over something, it causes the image to change in another location. And so a regular rollover, if I roll over this first square at the top left up here, that's how a regular rollover works, where it just replaces the same image that the user's cursor is currently over. But if I roll over this uh, rectangle next to it, you'll see that the far rectangle changes. And if I roll over this number four here, you'll see that uh, this one over here changes, and then you roll over this, and this picture down here changes. Anyway, you get the idea. Yes, dear. It's remote in the sense that you roll over in one place, but something changes in another place. Now, the correct term for this is a swap image behavior, and even more correct is that this is a JavaScript action. And so I'm going to show you how to do this in Dreamweaver, and you'll see it's quite simple, but you need to follow the steps in the right order. So you may find yourself referring to this video a few times. Duh. So let's go back to Dreamweaver. You'll see what we have here is the uh, HTML file that has most of the elements in it that you just saw previewed in, uh, in Firefox there. So I'm just going to walk you through inserting the JavaScript rollover again and then inserting a regular image again. And then I'll show you how to create those remote rollovers. So the first thing I'm going to do is click up here in the second box over which is currently empty, obviously. And then I'm going to look down in the code. And you'll see it put the cursor after the closing tag. So I obviously don't want to leave the cursor there. If I'm ever not sure what box I'm currently working with, I can just click in that line of the code, and it will give me an outline over here in Design View so that I know that I'm working with the correct box. So I'm now just going to click between the open and closing tags, and then go ahead and insert that image. Okay, now let's go ahead and insert the rollover. So this time I'm just going to go ahead and click in the code. And as you remember, inserting a rollover is almost identical to inserting an image, just a, another couple of steps. So I'll choose that from the image menu. And then the first thing I want to do is I want to give this a name. And you'll see why that's important in a minute. So I'm going to call this button A. And then what I want to do is define the original image, in other words, the image that loads uh, when the page loads, and then the rollover image, which will be the image that shows up when the cursor is over it. Okay, and now for the over image. All right, and that's it. I do want to point out that this box is checked by default, preload rollover image, and you definitely want to leave that checked. And so that means that when the page is loaded, it will automatically load the image for the rollover at the same time. Uh, that's important because you don't want there to be a delay when the user rolls over it, waiting for that second image to load. Click OK. And then let me show you something. I'm going to go ahead and open up the behaviors window. And I added mine over here to the dock. If you don't find your behaviors window, remember it's located under the window menu over here. Right there. And so I tend to put it over here just so it's very convenient to get to because I use this quite a bit. Now, you'll notice that with this code active, or if I click in the design view around that square, it will show a couple of behaviors over here. So in essence, Dreamweaver, by us using the insert rollover image command, has generated this behavior or this JavaScript. And I showed you in the movie about the rollovers all the script this generated, which is quite substantial. I don't want to know. OK, so if I open this up, so I'm going to double click on the swap image behavior here. 
And this is the, the window we're going to use when we create the remote image rollovers. And it's important to look at this because you need to tell it two things. Now, because you already have an image marked, you don't have to tell Dreamweaver that. It knows that that image is marked and that that's the image when you roll over will cause the behavior. Um, what you want to tell it here is that when somebody rolls over this, that it will affect one of these particular images. It's very important that right now this is, this is button A, and this is referring to button A here, and that's the way it should be because it's a self-contained rollover. But if I were trying to get, say, this one to change when I rolled over this, then this would have to be marked here. I would need to bark button C, saying that when I roll over this, then this will change. But because this is self-contained, I'm going to leave it on button A. And then this is telling that when you roll over uh, the button and this changes, this is what it should change to. These two things, preload images, so the same as with the rollover, and then restore images on mouse out. That's important because that means when the user's mouse leaves the square, it will go back to the original image it was before. So I'm just going to click that. The second behavior here is really not openable. It's just saying that when you leave that area, it will restore the image. So let's go ahead and create a remote uh, rollover. So I'm going to click on this box right here. And you may have noticed in the window that I just opened for the behavior that all of the images had a name except for one, and that one was called Untitled. Well, that's a problem. You want these to all have a name so that when you're looking at that list of images to choose from, you can tell what the images are. And that's giving your image an ID. So this one got an ID when I created the rollover. That's what the name generated. And if I click on this and you look down here in the Properties window, the lower left, you'll see the ID is established as button A. If I click on this 4 here, the ID for this one is button C. But when I click on this one, you'll see that it is blank. And so we need to remedy that. So I'm just going to click in there so I can give this an ID. So I think you can probably figure out this is going to be button B and uh, hit the enter key. And so now that has a label that I can refer to as I'm working with these. So I'm going to give this the, the remote rollover behavior. So I'm going to click on that to make sure it is marked. And then I'm going to go over here to the behaviors window, which is now blank because no behaviors have been attached to this image yet. So I'm going to click on the plus sign. And what I want to do is I want to choose swap image. So choose that over here and so again this is showing me the button that is currently marked but that actually is not what I want to change when I roll over it what I want to change is this big rectangle long skinny rectangle on the right hand side and that is called www so I'm going to choose that from the images list here and you see these are all the ID names here's button B and then I want that to change to what when I roll over this? I don't know. So I'm going to browse to the image I want that to change to, and that's called www over. Click open. And so now that says that when I roll over this image here, this image, which is this, will change to this. Okay? okay. So I'm going to click OK. And let's do one more, and then we'll preview. I'm going to click on that number four image. Uh, the name of this is button C. And again, go to the new behavior menu, swap image. And this time what I want to change is this image here, which is called web. So I'm going to click on that, browse to the image I want that to change to, which is web over and click open. All right, so click OK, and uh, let's go ahead and do a save and do a preview. OK, so here we go. So our rollover is working just fine. And then I roll over this, and you'll see that 
tall rectangle on the right changes and then I roll over this and you see that that web image changes and obviously these don't do anything yet because I haven't given those behaviors and I'm gonna let you do those on your own what Ever. Uh, but let me point out one last thing here. When I roll over this, which is the regular rollover, you'll see I get the little pointy hand. So in other words, it's acting as if it's a link. When I roll over these, it stays a regular arrow. Now there's no right or wrong. You get to choose which you want it to be. This by default will become a little pointy hand. In other words, it puts that, that pound sign into the link box that I showed you in the previous movie. But this does not. If you want the little pointy hand to show up, then you can just simply put the pound sign into the empty link box. Or, better yet, these would probably, if this were an actual website, link to another page and you would put the actual page link in there at that point. So I'm going to stop right here. You, you've got what you need to know. So just uh, watch this movie whenever you forget how to do this. Huh?